All righty. Good afternoon, everybody. Matt here from Epic Real Estate. This is where we show people how to invest in real estate so they can retire early. Got a great show for you today on how to pick the best real estate market for your real estate investing business. And I've got a really special guest joining me today to uh, help us do that and let you in on what he looks for and to give you actually access to a free tool that he put together to help you find the right market for you. So you want to stick around to the very end for that. Alrighty, so before we begin, if this is what you found us, if you like what you hear, uh, make sure that you uh, hit the subscribe button before you go. And if this is not your first time here, welcome back. And thank you for sharing this with your friends and family. We're going on what? Almost almost 12 years between the uh, YouTube channel and the podcast. And I just would not be here for, for you doing all of this sharing and spreading the good word. So you're the absolute best for doing that. So thank you. And by the way, if you'd like to look into working together one on one in the way that uh, I did with our, our, our client today or our guest today, um, head over to reiace.com, answer a few short questions about yourself and share with me a little bit about your goals. And then you can go ahead and pick a time for us to hop on the phone and brainstorm some ideas. Getting you to where you want to go with your real estate investing. All right. That's calm. All right. So let me have. Uh, Introduce our guest, happens to be an REI Ace client of mine, and he's turned out to be a really good friend as well. And uh, he's one of my more successful clients, definitely top 10. And uh, he blew the business completely out of the water in 18 short months, which was pretty remarkable to where he put himself in a position to retire from real estate really all together. And he says, I don't want to do this anymore. I got something else I want to do. And he went and pursued his passion of starting a software business. And he took the proceeds that he had earned from real estate, the passive income that he had created from real estate. And he just applied it all there to go pursue his real dream, his real vision. And that software, his first project happens to be right around the, the lead generation activities that he used and implemented in his own business to be such a successful real estate investor. And initially it was, you know, the way he was using it, it was all pieced together with spreadsheets and bubble gum and duct tape and barbed wire. And then, he went out and he just kind of rebuilt the whole thing in a more user friendly platform, polished it up. And then uh, he's gone through a few different model evolutions and he's just kind of like the, a done for you service. Now he's gone straight agency with it and he's now helping investors all across the country grow their business. And he's working with quite a bit here, helping them duplicate his results that he achieved in this very prime. So he's got a gift for you today. So make sure you stay or stick around to the end. And uh, that gift is going to help you pick the best market for you. So without further ado, please help me welcome Mr. Josh Miller. Josh, welcome back. Welcome home, buddy. <laughs> this this is home. So, uh, yeah, it's good to be back home. Hearing the recap of your life is strange coming out of your mouth. Like, you know me so well. I think we've been working together for um, six, six plus years. So yeah. it's... And, uh, uh, you know how we met? Do you remember what the night we met? I do. It was in Manhattan Beach at a bar. <laughs> it was. Yeah, it was the happy hour right after the event, the for investor by investor event. That's, That's right. right. Yeah. And, uh, it was so funny. I remember, and I've never even told you this, but I just remember we were at the bar, and, and, and Mercedes and I were there, and we were networking and, and, and interacting with the room. And you were just standing by my side, looking up and just smiling the whole time and just asking me questions. And I was like, who is this guy? Right? You, you're so nice and friendly, but you had so many questions. You're so curious. And, uh, you know, who knew? I, I didn't know I would ever see you after that night. And then you came to an event and then uh, decided to work together. So it's been great ever since. So um, thanks for being persistent with that. Yeah, no, it was um, I, I remember my biggest challenge and it was I was I was marketing nationwide. I was buying and selling homes all over the country and it was working so so, but it definitely wasn't going to get me to my dream of living passively and getting to my financial freedom. And the first advice you gave me was uh, you need to narrow it down, pick a market. So I spent six months trying to figure out what market to go to. And it's kind of funny because that's circling back to where we're at now is right. how to pick a market. And I remember I picked you said pick a market. And so of course I picked three markets and I wanted to go in all three markets. And I remember sitting in the, um, like one of these mastermind events you had after one of the events and you're like, no, you need to pick one market, go into one market. And so I picked my top one market and uh, yeah, the rest is history. 
rest is history. Well, super. Um, and first, just before we begin, I just want to acknowledge you. This how great. Uh, I mean, you've been. You always call me your mentor, and you say always say I'm an important person in your life, and and I'm inspiring to you. But I want you to know. I mean, I'm always inspired by hustle. I'm inspired by focus. I'm inspired by. Uh, you embody all of those things. So uh, to me is uh, I have to you. So thank you. Um, all right. Oh yeah, there's a little delay. You're from you're calling from Paris, Paris, France, right now. Yeah, living your dream it has its consequences of uh, living across the world. So yeah, I moved here in December, and uh, it's it's it is absolutely amazing to just do whatever you want. I got my whole day to spend with my kids, and we travel and. Every week we're traveling, and uh, but the consequences are there's some delay, so I'm sorry about that. It's remarkable, you know. We sit here and uh, how spoiled we are. We're taking a a a, a signal and, and transferring all the way across the globe, and then all the way back and engaging in a conversation. And we're like, this damn one second delay is just a piece of crap. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> we're so blessed in the times that we live. But uh, let's go ahead and I'll go ahead and share my screen here with the uh, link that you passed over to me. And I'll certainly share the link with everybody before uh, before we go so you can play with this tool yourself. And you're just going to walk me through it. So rather than you zipping around all over the place, you walk me through it and uh, we'll go from there. Yeah, I think that'll be best. So if you just go ahead and scroll down a little bit and heads up we're doing a massive update to this tool so it may look slightly different um the update's coming out uh probably the end of this week so just adding a, a few more neat features but um as a backstory to this this is really if you're doing marketing of any sorts to try to get distressed homes and if you have an unlimited budget to do your marketing, you don't need this tool. Just spend away, mail every house, cold call every house, door knock every house. But if you have a limited budget, you need to be very precise on who you target. And this tool will allow you to find those zip codes where you should be targeting so that at the end of the day, if you say you have an absentee equity, high equity list, and you've got the option of which home do I mail to, you'll want to mail it to the zip codes where you have a better chance of finding those distressed homeowners. Okay, well, perfect. So I got that. So what do you think is most important? I'm kind of gathering right now, like people ask, what's the best list? What's the best list? But you think probably the, best, the zip code is the first place to start. Is that right? Yes. So no matter what list you're choosing uh, within that list, you'll want to then target the right zip codes. So let's say you decide that your best list is going to be a high equity, absentee owner um, who's owned the house for 15 years or longer. For example, if you take that across your county, you're going to still be left with an insane number, say 50,000 people. So how do you narrow that down? Well, you want to narrow it down first and foremost by the zip code. Or if you want to reverse this and you're unsure about where to even start marketing, you want to first pick the zip codes and then find out what niche list you can get within those zip codes. Got it. So what is it that you look for in a zip code then? So there are a lot of things that you're going to be looking for depending on what your exit strategy is. And so this tool is specifically built for folks wanting to wholesale properties or perhaps hotel properties. If you're looking to build up a rental portfolio, I would use a completely different set of data. This is more of, hey, I want to make some quick money. This is where I would focus. Very good. I'm sure no one is going to uh, reject quick money. So let's focus on quick money today. All right. So here's the tool. And uh, tell me what I'm looking at and where do we start? Yeah, well, to start, I think just to make it easier to see at the very bottom right hand corner, there's going to be like this um, two arrows pointing at each other. And that's what's going to expand the screen. 
um, just so it's easier to see. Oh, that's the wrong one. Right here? No, that should have been it. The bottom right. Right here? Right. Yep. There we go. All right. Okay. I just can't so, see you anymore, just so you know. But cool. Uh, so the first thing that we got to do is um, you, you know, I always prefer to market starting off in your own state or in your own county or in your own metro if possible. So um, you're in Vegas, right? So let's go ahead and start with Vegas and, and let's filter that down. So over there in state up at the top, let's choose uh, Nevada. All right. All right. And then under the metro, let's choose uh, Las Vegas. Okay, so now we've essentially just filtered it down to uh, the the Vegas metro area. Uh, we could further filter down to county and cities, but this will give us a good comparison. Now, I could have easily put a number next to each zip code and said this is number one, number two, and number three, but I didn't because this is next few steps is really more of an art than a science. So we're going to be playing around with different scenarios to figure out what's going to work best. Uh, my favorite thing to start with is really, um, it's kind of hidden there, but is that distress score. What that distress score represents is essentially uh, how many vacant properties there are in that zip code, um, how many pre-foreclosures happen, um, how many folks haven't graduated from high school. There's a lot of data packed into that one number. And the higher the distress score, the more uh, pain there is going to be in that in that zip. So if we go over to the demographics tab, um, let's just go ahead and just filter our data down. What you just did by sorting, that's perfect. But we're going to actually just remove everybody that has no distress. So over then in that distress score, let's let's filter it starting at about 50. And that's going to give us starting at the uh, well, that's the high number. Uh, yeah, there we go. And it's up to you on how far you want to go. Personally, I don't really love the war zone, so I might remove anything over, let's say, 96. But again, you may want to leave it open because you know your area best and you may know that, hey, it used to be a war zone when all the census data was collected. It's being gentrified, so it's up to you on that. So let's go back up at the top left. Let's go back to the cash sales tab so we can uh, we can just further filter this down. So now we are only seeing the distressed um, uh, zip codes. Next thing I like to look at is I like to see a lot of absentee owners. But instead of just looking at the pure count, what we're doing is we're taking the last six months, the total number of uh, homes that were sold to an absentee owner, and we're dividing it by the total number of single family homes in that market. And the reason that's so important is to sort by the percent of absentee owners is because this is why if you are going to say, send a lot of direct mail out or cold call one market, now you're increasing your chances that you're going to actually be hitting the areas that have the most activities, the areas where there are these homeowners will have the most likelihood of selling because history has shown that there's a lot of absentee owners buying and selling in that market. Okay. So yeah, if we just sort by a percent of absentee sales right there, and that's pretty much it. I mean, we can further do some additional filters, but um, this is going to give us pretty much the, at a big ballpark what we need. And so, what about five zip codes would be kind of like this area where we want to start? Yes and no. So, it looks like I don't have too much data on like that 89018. Um, so, I would probably remove that. Also, okay. the home prices, I'm eyeing the home prices as we speak and i'm looking at the ranges so i'm seeing lows of 
what is that? 270 to 386. So they all seem within a fair amount. If I started seeing like 400s or 500s or 100s, I might change my filters to say, hey, I don't want these crazy outliers because there's probably a reason for that. But those all look fairly uh, decent. Um, the other thing I want to make sure is that there's great percent of cash sales. So if I'm looking at that cash sales column and I start seeing some really low numbers, I might step back and be like, hmm, I wonder why there's not much activity in here. These numbers are amazing though. I mean, most markets are not going to be this crazy hot towards investors. If you- So you're saying it's like 1.9, 1.5, these are really good numbers? Anything over like half a percent is going to be a really good. So clearly what this is saying is all these zip codes, if you bought a property, you're going to have a really easy time uh, finding an investor to flip it. Or if you yourself want to flip it to a, to a, um, a landlord, you're going to, you're going to be able to charge that premium dollar because there's so much activity happening in these zips. Got it. By the way, if you're listening on the podcast and you can't see what we're doing right now, uh, please go to epicrei.tv. That's the domain name, epicrei.tv. It'll take you to the our YouTube page, and then uh, you can actually see what we're looking at. It's pretty remarkable, and it's something that you're going to want to uh, go do for yourself if finding a good market is important to you. All right, go ahead. Well, and, and speaking of this, I, I'm constantly amazed at how many folks who do their marketing don't constantly look at this. They get into this habit of just pulling the best list. What's the best list? But I right. need to constantly go back and say, okay, what's my best zip codes? And then target that. So this isn't just for people starting out. Even if you're an established investor and you're like, oh, I know my best zip in my market. You should really pay attention to this. And this is where you should spend the bulk of your marketing dollars. So I use this even for my Google ads, for example, when I'm running my PPC, my, my ads online, while they don't exactly allow you to run ads against a certain zip, you can find a location and do a radius around that location and essentially I know I'm going to get the biggest bang for my buck by doing that. So it goes across the board of not only starting, but as you're an established investor, this is where you should putting your heart, your soul, your money is in these top tips. Got it. So let me, let me clarify. So if someone was, you know, I always recommend having a couple factors stacked into your list. So if we went for absentee owners, let's say some sort of lean on them. Um, and owned, we always took over, uh, owned over 10 years or more. So if we took that, that, that's a good performing list. Um, but that, that list would perform potentially much better here in eight, nine, one, six, nine, than it would perform here, even though it's the same list. Exactly. Yes. Got it. The data. So, the list, right? so you could, you could essentially pick these zip codes and market to all lists and have a better response than picking the best list and say one of these lower numbers. Yes. Right. Okay. Yeah. I understand the logic. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yes. So I, I'll add that if you have a super, super niche specialty list, again, this is just coming down to everybody's got a budget. So no budget spend everywhere. So what I like to do is I like to start with a super niche list and those I'll ignore the zip code. So if I can find a water shut off tax delinquent vacant deceased person, I'm doing that no matter where they're at because there's, there's only so many. But once you, you know, f go through your great data, then you're left with, you know, your absentee equity owned a while. And that's where, you just don't have the budget to go across. So how many zips codes depends on your budget. If you got a very small, you want to go the first top two or three. If you got a larger budget, expand that to the top 10 and until your budget runs out. Got it. Got it. Okay. Perfect. Super. That's uh, anything else to, to notate about this market. 
Um, let's sort by cash sales real quick. I'm just curious to see kind of like your top rank cash sales um, and along with the um, distress score, along with the price. So I'm looking at that 89109 just because it has a slightly higher distress score. But that home price is kind of up there. So yeah, you know what? I probably it's kind of middle of the road for Vegas though right now. That's kind of the median. Yeah, I mean, if if I was to say, hey, one zip code that I would go into, it'd probably that be that top one, eight nine one six nine, just because the um, the price home price is a little, is a little bit lower. Okay, so yeah. I've never given much. You know, obviously, I don't want to do luxury homes. That's if I'm flipping and I want to do a high volume of flipping, but I've never given much um, credence to the actual home price. And it sounds like you do. How come? What's your experience there? It, it really depends on your exit strategy. Like if, um, and yeah, so with the rents and with the lease options, I do like the a little bit higher, but on the wholesale deals, my experience has been that the lower the home price, the less the homeowner cares about discounting his price. Like for you, you know, you're trying to make, 15k off of the deal and so for a homeowner who has to you know essentially it's not as big of a deal for them it it appears to knock off their price 15k uh, or it's more of a percentage now that i think about it right so as a percentage it, it doesn't feel that much for um like I, I'll tell a story. Uh, I had a realtor that I bought a house from. She was a really huge realtor and she just did high, not high end homes, but the $300,000 homes. That's all she listed and sold. And she had a rental and it was about 150 and she called me up and she sold me her property. And I was like, you're one of the biggest realtors in town why don't you do it yourself? And she's like, ah, it's whatever. It's like chum change. It's not worth my time to list this property. So I guess that's always stuck with me. Like the lower end homes, they don't, they just don't care as much. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Got it. Uh, if you're watching us right now, glad you are. Hopefully you're learning something. Uh, go ahead and type your market into the chat. We'll do your market next. So uh, go ahead and type that in the first one that we see. We'll I forgot we're alive. There's people watching. <laughs> yeah, there's people watching. <laughs> I know. It's, uh, I decided not to do Zoom anymore. This is so much more fun, right? We get the live interaction. But go ahead and type your market in, and we'll move on. So, Josh, tell me a little bit about Go for Close and what you're doing with uh, your service over there now. Yeah, no, we um, we have gone through a couple iterations. I really love data, as you can tell, and so. We have gone super deep into, well, let me back up. We started with the software, but what I found is that everyone is good at different hats and has different skill sets. I was not necessarily a salesperson. And so having a done for you marketing seems to make more sense than saying, hey, everybody needs to wear this marketing hat and I need to teach you how to use the software. And it was just becoming, again, something that I wasn't in love with. And so transitioning to this done for you service where we can just take all of your needs with regard to marketing and just be the best at it. That's where we're at now. And just recently, we also started offering the data. So we do the data, the people and the marketing service. But the data, I feel like, is the key to everything without the right data, without the right specialty list doesn't matter how good you are at the actual marketing. And so that's just a recent service that we started as well of just done for you data. We'll go out yeah. and scour it's very through. It's be here if, if we're getting a mix up on our uh, internet uh, connection here. I apologize for that. It's my fault. I moved to Paris. <laughs> Yeah, the, uh, the internet is not great over here today. The wind is blowing like crazy. But um, let's see if we can just keep on going on. And I think I have an eternal recording too that we might be able to use later. 
But uh, Matt Pleskovic is an Aria Ace client, and he's picking uh, our hometown, both of us, Josh, Los Angeles. So let's go ahead and look at uh, Los Angeles and see what we got. All right. So does that make it easier when we do that, when I make it larger like that? Yeah, it's a little easier to see. Okay, cool. All right, so we're going to go to California, start at the top, right? Yeah, you'll have to clear your metro first. the state first and then mess me up i guess huh? all right there we go come over here to cali los angeles all right then we want to come over to demographics is that right yeah the filter will stay on since you're in the okay. same so we still have the same filter would you recommend this filter for Los Angeles or should we adjust it? Um, I think that's that's fine. Okay. We'll, we'll leave it. Very good. Okay. So LA is so big. Um, you may want to just pick a couple cities around you that you already know, hey, this is where I want to target. Um, we'll go with the whole county right now, but uh, I know um, I know Matt's up in the kind of the Glendale area. He's in the uh, Pasadena area. He's you'll want to you'll want to hold down uh, Control to select. Oh, I hold him down. Okay. Um, let's see. He's in where were we? Pasadena. What was the other one I said? Glendale. Glendale. Hold, okay. Oh yeah, you're a, I forgot you're a PC guy. All right. Um, where else is he up at Burbank? Let's go Burbank too. Let's see what we come up with. All right, is there anything else in there that we want to see city-wise? I guess that looks good, right? So it, the reason you're only seeing a few zips is it's a nice area and so it's right. eliminating because of the demographic score or the distress score it's eliminating all those nice zips so um yeah you're not you're not left with a whole lot of options but this is where you're at and so this is why this is so important is this is going to save you a ton of money so instead of just blasting the whole pasadena now you can say hey i'm only going to touch 91101 and um, I mean, looking at all of these numbers, um, that's it. I mean, 91101 is where you want to be. And uh, 737. <laughs> um, so the, the median home price there is 737, uh, right. which is absolutely amazing. <laughs> uh, that seems like a deal, actually, over there. <laughs> uh, so yeah, you may want to widen that so you can see it without it um, breaking into two. But essentially, yeah, you don't have a whole lot of options, and so maybe you just target all of these. Uh, the 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 fact that there are cash sales for seven thirty seven is a little surprising that there's that many, uh, but it just goes to show you that it's. Uh, competitive and people are flipping and the number of absentee owners i mean that's huge so in the last six months uh 102 properties um are have been sold there so i mean there's definitely a lot of activity there's a lot of money to be made um that would be my ideal target market right there got it 9101 maddie all right so matt and I Actually, I had a coaching call, and he's coincidentally on this uh, live stream today. We just talked earlier. Um, and so he's got a little bit more marketing. He's got another round of marketing that's going out, and uh, he can go ahead and make that adjustment. So we'll make that adjustment for the here. But um, if you were his coach, Josh, and him living in this area, would you recommend he focuses here and that should be enough business for him? Or would you venture or suggest maybe going to a different market? 
I mean, with the level of competition there, I would say the traditional um, take get a large list uh, is going to be very difficult. And I would suggest going super, super niche. So my favorite niche list is the deceased tax delinquent vacant property. And of course, everybody and their mother is going to find that list because it's it's a little obvious. But what 99% of people won't do is the actual legwork to locate the actual homeowners. So the traditional direct mail, cold calling or texting won't work. And you'll want to put in the legwork of actually going out and door knocking or um, using uh, services like there's tons of them been verified or um, people searches to find the relatives and calling up each relative saying, Hey, notice this property it looks a little run down, vacant. Do you know anything about it? And really digging in. So it's a, it's a very manual way, but although what I'm saying isn't new and this methodology has been around forever, it's amazing how few people actually do it. So that would be my recommendation if you're deciding that, no, I want to flip here. I want to find, I want to make some big money in this market. It's a hundred percent possible. People do it every day. It's just a lot harder. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so definitely that that's something that we, that I'd recommend to him for sure, based on uh, your logic there. I agree. If we were to look at a different market or an additional market and do this, say, virtually, do you think it's better to, from your experience and your clients, to go to a market that's close to your area or just does it even matter if you want one on the other side of the country to do it? Uh, I, again, it, it, sorry to sound like a broken record, but it depends on your end goal. Like if your end goal is to build up a rental portfolio, then I would say do a market where you could eventually go into that so you, yeah you start with the wholesaling but since your goal is to build up the passive income anyways you might as well learn the market and go into the market that has both the good numbers and could eventually lead into you building up that rental portfolio um if that's out of the question and yeah you're like strictly wholesaling then yeah i would just um cherry pick and just this is becoming more and more popular of not sticking your roots into one market, but literally just expand, expand, keep expanding, keep expanding, build your boots on the ground and then expand to the next one. And literally just keep cherry picking all the best zips across the country. So start in one, don't try to do it all at once across the country, start in one market, cherry pick, find the boots on the ground that can take your photographs, that can list the property, your cash buyers, and then move into another market and repeat, but always using the best zips. If you don't use the best zips, you're kind of wasting your time. Got it. And we have some other markets we'll go ahead and look at, but I got a question that just came up based on what you said. You know, we're starting with the zip and then evaluating the zip. Is there a way to play with the parameters to find the best zip and kind of reverse engineer it? Uh, I mean, theoretically, yeah, you could. Um, I would say doing all states and all metros probably won't give you it. Um, just, I mean, I guess I never, I've never done it. We could try. Do you, do you want to try real quick? Sure. Yeah, I'm just thinking of someone that you know. Okay, I I don't want to work in my market, which is almost everybody because everybody thinks their market sucks and everyone else's market. <laughs> <laughs> That's what everybody thinks. Um, so if I wanted to say, okay, I'm going to pick a different market, which one should I do? And say they didn't have a relationship there and they didn't have any knowledge of the market. They just want to go basically by, by the, the numbers, which one's going to produce the, the best results. I, I, wouldn't, I would not necessarily use this to do that. I would more, um, cause this is, I built this specifically for with in mind, I have a Metro in mind and I want to find the right. If I was to do, try to say, Hey, the, the country's my oyster. I could go anywhere. I would look for, um, le the least amount of competition. That's why I chose Omaha, Nebraska. And it turned out really well. And so I would 
use this tool to make sure that there's not no competition like you want activity but just not too much so when we sort this let's go ahead and do this and look at across the whole country i would say ignore the hot ones that have uh that have great numbers if it's also going to be a very competitive market if you've never heard of it that's great that's probably the market that you should end up in uh, got it. it looks like we still have city selected so we'll want to uh, oh, okay. Got it. Got it. okay so we'll select so is that how what you're saying select every yeah. state yeah so let's go and change those home prices so let's let's lower the home price max to say like four hundred thousand. and i would also do a minimum like once you um once you yeah that's good and i would also do a minimum you can just type in i would start at a minimum of like seventy five thousand. um okay and what else would I change? Um, I, I'm getting my days on market from uh, realtor.com. And uh, unfortunately, they're not publishing everything. Otherwise, I would also filter. So pay attention to it as we look at the data. If the days on market is 171, I would, uh, I'd be very cautious because we're in the hottest market in history. So uh, yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'd be wary of that. But let's go ahead. Let's sort by a percent of cash sales right there and see what we what we come up with. Um, let's also do one other thing. Let's um under the cash sales, let's do a minimum up there on the center. Yeah, let's put a minimum of like 10 homes there. Um, that's just saying in that zip code, we want to see at least 10 cash sales in the last six months. Um Okay, so uh, the other thing to be wary of is just vacation spots. So cash sales and absentee owners tend to flock to vacation spots. So this Fort Pierce, Florida, uh, it could be a vacation area. So I would investigate that before I'd say, yeah, for sure, grab that one. Um, if you click on it, it, it should zoom in to, to it just so we can take a look at it. Um, no. Probably not a vacation area. Usually they're surrounded by like lakes and stuff. So, right, right. Um, yeah, I mean, I've never heard of it, but maybe everyone else in the world has. So maybe that would be a good one. Um, obviously, like some of these other ones, like Kansas City, I would stay away from New York, Indianapolis. I mean, these are amazing, amazing markets, like out of control hot, the best in the country you're going up against a lot of stiff competition and if you're new i wouldn't jump into that right away can you can you tell by looking at this if there is competition there i mean there is yes. cash sales numbers i don't have it i mean i could add another column i actually have the data so i will add in another column um that's a i meant to do it i, I it'll be here the, I'll, I'll add it into the next additional so you're gonna next time you look at this you'll see another column with the level of competition and the way i'm pulling that data is i'm looking at the amount of google ad uh cost like for certain words in a given market and that tells me how competitive that market is and so um if your market costs five hundred dollars for sell my house fast versus you know fifty dollars in another market that, that's what tells me the level of competition okay super so if we just went by this we'd kind of start our way down and kind of start at the top work our way down from this percentage of cash sales yep and look for look for cities that you've never heard of got it pine hills florida never heard of it one in hawaii that's surprising that's probably a vacation area. Okay, yeah, you're probably right. Spanish Lake, Missouri. Rio Doso, New Mexico. That's a great one, actually. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it's in a state that you're like, what in the world? <laughs> that's probably like, that's very interesting. 
Don't turn it off, please, on live stream. Yeah, about to reset my modem. I was like, don't do that. <laughs> All right. Um, Casa Grande. Lots of Florida, huh? I, 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 part of that, again, is, you know, people going there to retire. So we're looking strictly at uh, cash purchases. Cash so, yeah, that's why this isn't necessarily – you. this is an art. We're going to investigate sure. these before just throwing money at marketing. Perfect. Okay, cool. All right, so that helped. That helped a lot. And then they just kind of go and start at the top and work your way down and pick a market. Very good. All right, so let's uh, let's do one. He is Haven Hill, Massachusetts. So let's see if I can remember how to do this now. So we're going to unselect all. I'm going to go to Massachusetts. And then Haven Hill, is that going to be a metro area? Is that going to be a city or a county? It's going to be a city then, right? Hmm. Maybe not. Oh, let me unselect all of these. All right, there we go. Well, we may need to adjust that home price. I don't know what the homes are going for in those areas. So you may want to clear that filter. And clear the cash sales to uh, put that back down this area. There we go. Okay. Here's Haver. There we go. Oh, Haver. All right. So we Let's still see. have that distress score filter, so we're only showing one. Ah. So we so may want to remove that. Again, this is just. If you have the luxury of choosing, if you're in a market where there are no distressed um, areas, good for you. <laughs> and uh, it's just going to mean it's a little harder to find those distressed homeowners. Got it. Okay. So that definitely added, gave us a few more. Right. Yeah. Let's completely clear that filter yet. Cool. Well, this is what we got. So these are really low, cash sales are really low, right? Yeah, so not a lot of activity going on there at, at all. Um, so there is some, but it's uh, it's gonna be hard to, It's this is gonna be a tough market. Okay, this cash sales number, this is in the, within the last six months, right? Correct. Okay, all right, um, cool, let's try another one then. So. One might want to look for a different area then, is what we're saying. Yeah, that, that's going to be fun. <laughs> that's, again, where I would go super, super niche and just try to go after the niche list and forget about kind of the mass direct mail texting, cold calling. Okay, perfect. All right. Let's go to San Bernardino, California. We'll do that whole county. I'm familiar. Cool. All right. So do we want to go over to demographics? Uh, let's just see what we get when we sort by home price. Let's sort home price lowest to highest. Uh, so yeah, I'm just glancing at um, kind of the range. So OK. Uh, yeah, let's let's go ahead and filter now by distress scores, and I, I want to pay attention to those home prices and make sure we're we're staying uh, at a reasonable price, which it appears there are. Yeah, let's sort by um, by percent of cash sales. All right. Like uh, that could be retirement as well, huh? Yeah, for sure. And again, like I wish I had more days on market. I haven't mentioned it till now, but do keep an eye on your days on market. That that data is all pulled monthly. So if you start seeing like some higher numbers, like in the you know 80, 90, 100, just be aware that possibly the market is slowing down. And so this is just something to keep in mind when you're giving your offers that, hey, if it's a very low days on market, 
I can be very um, aggressive on my offer. Like if they're asked, I can, I know the price is likely to continue going up. Like for me, what is driving the future is really the days on market. High days on market means be wary. Low days on market means be aggressive. Um, so that, that I should have mentioned this earlier. That's okay. Cool. So we're kind of looking, we'll, we'll probably nix Lake Arrow ahead. Yep, for sure. But maybe this, this Landers, Yucca Valley, Joshua Tree, Christine. Those are some, I mean, I guess his home prices are high. Um, Gosh, I've been out there too. That's, uh, actually, Joshua Tree has been kind of coming a little popular, right? Weed, right? <laughs> little Creek, Crestline. Crestline, that's going to be up in the mountains too, I think. Big Bear is up there. Victorville, yeah, that's, right? that's probably there for, so let's go ahead and, um, Maybe maybe filter these home prices. Let's go under five hundred thousand. See see what we get. And uh, I mean these these again. I would stay away from these. Um, while there's certainly money to be made in these Lake Arrowheads and Big Bear they're not showing up because of the best market right now. They're just showing up because that's where there are the cash sales and the absentee owners, but they're not necessarily distressed. So, right. uh, yeah, I would, I would, uh, 29 palms there is looking, uh, really nice, uh, low home price, a lot of activity. Um, I would I would definitely highly consider that one. What about uh, Needles and Barstow, Victorville? Yeah, yeah. I mean, one one sixty eight. That's getting low. Um, it 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 depends on your strategy. Like, just be wary of when you get too low. You're dealing with s possibly homes no one wants to touch. So make sure you know very specific what the buy box criteria is and don't go lower than that on your marketing. So there's there's really, yeah, if you know you have a buyer that will buy a $100,000 house there because it's dirt, go for it. But don't move into that unless you know you already have a buyer lined up for those type of properties. Perfect. All right. Well, thank you, Josh. I'll go ahead and put this uh, link in the chat so everyone can go play it and, and check out their own market. There's a couple different markets that I didn't get to get to, but uh, we could play this this little toy all day long. So <laughs> I'll put it in the chat so you all can go check it out yourself. Um, and so this is how you go do it. If So the basic criteria is, one, you want to do them. You don't have a huge marketing budget. Second thing is you want to do this on your own. If Josh, they wanted to work with you directly and just have you do all of this stuff for them. Kind of explain what the actual services that you guys do. Yeah. So the first service and what I'm most proud of is our data service. So um, how do you get, like I mentioned before, that tax delinquent, vacant, uh, deceased property? Either you do it yourself through a ton of work or you hire a company like ours that will go digging and not only get those niche lists, but about 80 other incredibly niche lists that take a lot of skill to get that data. And we get that data daily and we'll feed it to you. So you're the first person to get it and market to them. So that's our data only service. If you're like, hey, what else can you do? We can not only take that data, but we can actually do the marketing on your behalf. So we can send the text messages, we can do the cold calling, and we can actually do the Google ads and get on the phone with distressed homeowners who are looking to sell and then pass over those homeowners once we have them on the phone. And so literally at that point, you don't have to worry about marketing and you can focus on sales, you can focus on disposition. So yeah, that's it in a nutshell. Perfect. Yeah, you do it for them and they get to spend their time doing what's, what they get paid the most to do and that's to uh, negotiate contracts and close deals, right? Exactly. Yeah, I think like a, I um I've I think I've shared this with you before, but I've bought hundreds of properties and I've talked to two homeowners because I'm not good at sales and I recognize that. And what I'm good at is the data and the marketing. So that's all I focused on and I hired out for that part that I'm not the best at. So 
yeah, the vice versa. If you're looking for somebody who's really good at marketing, we are the best. I can say that like with a full confidence after spending six years working on this, that uh, it's uh, it's taken a lot of effort, but really happy with what we're delivering for our clients. Perfect. No, I've been happy with the results as well. And it's a pleasure to refer people over to you. And uh, if you'd like to work with Josh or at least have the conversation to uh, see if this is going to be a good fit for you, you can go to goforclose.com. And Josh is spreading the love here, keeping it here at Epic is and taking a significant discount off the onboarding fee if you decide to move forward. And I believe it, it amounted to about 85% off if you use the promo code Epic, unless something changed. I don't know. No, that's still true. And like, um, there is no place to put a discount because then everybody wants a discount if you put the little discount word in. So this is really the only place I'm doing this. So uh, please mention Matt. Um, Matt and I go way back. So say Matt Terrio, say Epic. Just let me know uh, when you tell us that you heard about it. The password then. Yeah, it really is because right. there's no other way to get it. Otherwise, the proposal goes out and it's it's about, like Matt said, 85% more. So mm, definitely mention Matt's name. Super. Well, thank you, Josh, for uh, staying up late for me in, in Paris, France. And uh, when are you coming back to the States? When I was going to ask you, when are you going to come and visit? <laughs> right. <laughs> you wait for me to go there, right? I'm not coming back for a while, man. Unless Russia thing goes crazy. I'm having, it's really fun. It's so cool to be able to jump on a flight for 20 bucks and go to Switzerland or uh, yesterday we were in Bruges, Brussels, or not Brussels, Bruges. Um, um, what's, what country's Bruges in? Um, I've never heard of Bruges. <laughs> it's next to Brussels. What country's Brussels in? This is embarrassing. Uh, is man. Austria, is it? No, no. Right. Belgium. Uh, Belgium. Got it. Yeah. So anyways, it's really fun. And uh, come and visit. Yeah, seriously. Right. It would be fun. I'm gonna wait till the, the, the missiles stop flying overhead. Sounds good. Right. All right, partner. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Sounds good. Okay, take care. Bye. All righty, so that wraps up this show. If you found this episode valuable, and I don't know how you couldn't have found this episode valuable, um, who else do you know that might as well? Yeah, there's a really good chance that you do know someone else that would find a whole lot of fun watching this and, and make a whole lot of money too. And when their name comes to mind, please share with them and ask them to click the subscribe button when they get here and I'll take great care of them. All righty. God loves you. And so do I. Health, peace, blessings and success to you. I'm Matt Terry.